Hey guys, welcome back. This is part four. We're going to work on the headdress. Um, the way I want to do this is I'm going to take some of this wire, I think it's about 18 gauge, and uh, form it into the shape of a headband. And then what I'm going to do is take some black fabric, glue it across the front and the back, and then trim it to the shape of the headband to cover this wire, okay? And then um, I'm going to take some polymer clay, also in the shape of the head piece, headband, and I'm going to take some toothpicks and just stick these in all the way around so that when I bake it they'll have the holes in it. And I'm going to do that all the way around to the ends and then I can put the wheat into this. So I'm going to go bake that, get this together, um, then I'm going to have to paint this black so I'll be back after all that. Okay I painted this part black, uh, the clay part so it would uh, blend in with the head, the uh, headband part, and uh, drilled out the holes a little bit just to make sure they're big enough. So I did get my order of wheat from Amazon. <laughs> you can get everything from Amazon. All right, so here's the deal: the wheat, and and uh, let's look at this crown again. Let's just take a minute. I have this here on my iPad. So, let me back it away. Okay. All right. So, this is kind of the one I'm looking at. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but uh, after I started looking at it again, it looks like there's like longer things poking out, and then there's the wheat is actually lower so then I started wondering should I have put more holes <laughs> I mean these things can be huge look at this one just like things sticking out so then I was thinking well maybe I could use the part I cut off of the wheat because they're going to be way too long you know so that's what I may do and then I could glue wheat on either side of what I put of uh, you know the longer things so, they're just so beautiful. I really love them. Okay, so I think that convinced myself that's what I want to do. <laughs> All right, so um, let's just try to see how this would work. Um, I'm going to use my kitchen shears and... I'm going to get some of these that look a little straighter. This one looks pretty straight. Alright, so if I were to put this in, it would be about that long. So I think I'll cut about that much off, okay? So that means if I were to put that in, it would be that tall. So instead... Let's see if I put this in, it would be taller. Hopefully it's going to go in the hole. Sort of twist it. I think I can get it in there. Okay, so could do that and then like come in and put the wheat where did my little wheat thingy go up there? like on either side lower and that might look more like the thing yeah I think that's what I'm going to do alright so that means I need to pull out some of these and I can use these as a guide and 
they do they sort of have a, a casing on them too so it's it's easier it's easy to pull them off than to try to make them tapered okay see they they have like a coating like it's you know, like a stalk. Okay. That's working, I think. That's working. I think that will be good idea because it seems like they, they're fuller than I initially thought with more wheat I was thinking just one thing of wheat but all right let's start sticking some of these in and see how this looks um, so what we're gonna do is um, surprise surprise we're gonna use some e6000 and It's a little smaller. Put some on the end. And then push it down into the hole. Ta-da! Alright, I'm going to finish this off camera and I'll be back in just a second. I'm going to switch over to my glue gun because it's going to help me do this a little bit quicker. It dries faster. Um, and one of the things I want to add before I start adding the flowers is some ribbon um, to the sides. Uh, some of the crowns I've seen have ribbons coming down, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use some red. And some green and some white, I think. Maybe some blue, too. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to add this. Oh, where did all that hair come from? Ugh. I don't know why I think I don't know where the hair's coming from. My hair's like falling out. I don't know what's going on, but it's coming out in like handfuls. Maybe it's just stress. Who knows? Of course, everything in my craft room is inundated with alpaca fiber from previous dolls because it's never going to go away. Alpaca fiber stays around forever. Okay, now let's do some white. I'm doing the ribbons now because I want to be able to put some uh, flowers over top of that and hide the where the you know ribbon is attached. I ordered some embroidered ribbon. Of course, naturally, it's not going to be here for a while, so we'll just start with this. We can always add it later. I think. By the way, if you've never used a glue gun, the glue is extremely hot, so be careful. <laughs> it will burn you. Like it's, you know, I'm used to the E6000 being able to like put my hands on it and 
everything. I think I'll add a little bit of blue, you know, because we've got all different colors. Why not? Why not be festive? All right, now I need to um, get some things out of the way here. I'm getting into that habit I have of crap everywhere while I'm working because I just can't clean up in between doing things. But I'm going to start gluing things together. I don't want to glue together. All right, now let's try doing the wheat. to the side I don't like that it's just too big isn't it? let's try one of these smaller pieces Yeah, that's better. So, the moral of this story is wheat is all not the same size. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just going to try to use the same size on each side. That way, I think it will look okay. All right. Um... All right. I know it seems like I don't know what I'm doing and that's because I don't know what I'm doing. Ah. All right, I'm gonna try doing it like this. All right, that was a pretty big piece of wheat, so. Ah. Ow. See, hot, hot, hot. Very hot. All right. Um, I need another big, fairly large piece of wheat. That looks good. There. There we go. That looks better. Ugh. Don't fall. 
I don't know, for some reason I'm wanting to sing Bringing in the Sheaves. <laughs> bringing in the Sheaves. Bringing in the Sheaves. <sighs> so, um, today is Wednesday, the 16th of March. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, video this morning of President Zelensky talking to Congress. Um, I thought it, I thought it was great. And I, I mean, I know there's purpose behind it and I know the reason, you know, that it was done. The video that, that they showed of, you know, trying to explain to people here the before and after of Ukraine before Russia started trying to destroy it and then you know the after pictures did you see the video yeah it was pretty heart-wrenching I don't know how anybody was able to watch it and not cry certainly I was reduced to tears um so, uh, I think, you know, that was obviously, I mean, I think he's pulling out all the stops to try to save his country and, you know, who can blame him. Uh, and it is, it's, it's heart wrenching. It, it's just completely inconceivable that we're in 2022 we're supposedly evolved, you know, we're supposedly more civilized than cavemen. And yet, you know, there can still be war. There can still be people who just start killing people for no reason. And get away with it. There's, you know, everybody has opinions, especially Americans. <laughs> You know, and everybody has their concept of what's right or wrong or, or how far people can go, I guess. Um, I, I know, you know, the, the fear of everybody is that we don't start a nuclear war. And I think that fear is coming a lot from the fact that nobody really knows what Putin is capable of. You know, is he really capable of of starting a nuclear war? Is that something that he's really willing to go that far with to get what he wants? Or does he have any kind of sense of decency left? By the way, if I seem like I'm anti-Russian. I'm just anti-Putin. I recognize that the people over there would not want this if they knew what was going on or or had any, you know, control over it. I know that. And so I, I am not being anti-Russian. I'm being anti-Putin. I'm being anti-authoritarian, anti- evil, whatever you want to call it. And one of the reasons I decided to do this video is because I know there are so many really talented doll artists in the Ukraine, but also in Russia. I mean, some of the most beautiful things I've, I've seen for dolls. Russian artists are just amazing. So I thought it was appropriate to do the doll and to do the, you know, to try to do this um, fundraiser with dolls because dolls are, are the best in terms of innocence. They're something that reminds us of our childhood, takes us back to our childhood, um, and yet, 
also remind us of children, you know, live, real live children. You know, a lot of us feel like our dolls are children. <laughs> and that's the innocence of the world. That's what makes us better people is when we think like children. And, whoa, sorry guys, lost my camera there. And when we behave like children in an innocent way, instead of in a bully way, like, like Putin. Gummit. I'm having a lot of trouble with my camera falling over. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of my thought behind the whole, the doll thing and, and, you know, that there's so many wonderful artists, doll artists, all over, really, the world, but I know there are a lot in what we call the, the Eastern Bloc countries. Or what used to be called the Eastern Bloc countries and in Russia so um, that's why I'm doing this we have solidarity in those of us who love dolls and beautiful things and, and peace and the way of the child So yeah, let's let's come together. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this auction. I, I talked with some people that I thought might help, and we'll see. Um, I'm wanting to, you know, do it either as an auction, or you know, you can give, and then your name gets put in a pot, and the more times you give, or the more you give. The more times you get in the pot. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I'm still working on that. I'm trying to make it fair. Because I know not everybody has $300. But everybody might want to participate. The other part is with Facebook. I don't know how much you know about Facebook. But they have a way of thwarting you. When you're trying to do something. Even if it's something good. And they are. Uh, you know spyware. Or whatever it is. Um, can tell if you're saying. Like, if you put something up and say, there's a price on this, then they assume that you're trying to sell something. So, I'm not sure how all that's going to work, but um, I'm trying to work on it, and I'm looking for some help with that. So, all right. So, uh, now we're back to the part where we want to put flowers on it. So, um you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to work from the back and move out because I don't have like a lot of real estate, you know, so it's going to be like I'll put some tall things and then put shorter things in front of it. Uh, so I just have to look through what flowers I have. I, I don't, you know, I didn't go out and buy things specifically for this, uh, but hopefully I'm going to have enough of uh, things that I already had to be able to do it. Um, I think that when I look at these crowns, to me it, it reminds me of the harvest, you know, like with the weed and autumn colors and things like that. But I think also the spring to some degree, you know, there's daisies and, you know, the sunflowers and things like that. So I'm not going to really stick with any kind of like theme of one particular season. I'm going to stick with the theme of what... Lara has available. <laughs> so, uh, I think I have enough of these white flowers. Let's see. There's some more. I think I have enough of these. I could do some tall flowers. Let me get my wire cutters. Uh, 
Okay, so I'll start kind of in the middle and that way if I run out it'll be more towards the end. <laughs> I just think these are so beautiful. These are paper flowers, by the way. They're not silk. I have some silk flowers and some paper flowers. And I've kind of been this type of person that I like, if I see something that I think I could use in the future, I'll buy it. <laughs> and then hopefully I can. So I have things I've collected. That's why everything doesn't match necessarily. But that's okay. I like to have things on hand. That way I don't have to run out and buy them. I'm spacing these a little apart because it seems like if I try to put them on every single stalk of wheat, it's going to be too close together. So for those of you who are listening, type in the comment box where you're from. I'd like to know where everybody's coming from. Um, you know what I might do is go in between and then I have these little flowers. So I could put like some of those. In between. Let's try that. Sorry, I had to take a little break there. I had a, a message from my friend that I was asking for help. Um, so she was saying maybe try eBay to do, you know, an auction there. And that's a possibility. I, has any of you, have any of you guys done any kind of auction or any kind of fundraising on Facebook or eBay or whatever? Um, I'd love to get some input on this because I don't want to mess it up. You know, I want to try to do something and do it do it well if I'm going to do it uh, I'm really concerned that if I put it up and say okay just post in the comments what you would bid on this doll and and you know give it a certain time limit um, say you know okay by this date whoever has the the last highest bid is you know going to win the doll I'm afraid that Facebook will see that as selling you know what I'm saying and like mess it up because I did have a I was trying to sell nail strips one time when I was out of work I was using that as a way to make money you may remember that 
and uh, I had to set up a different page because I was using it to sell things and I don't want to have to do that I want to be able to reach people from my page but at the same time I want to um, you know not have Facebook mess it up because they they do a lot of things through their automatic processes you know it's not necessarily somebody looking at it and saying oh that's a nice thing to do we'll, we'll let her do that you know it's just like they scan and if it says um oh living out of blue and if it says words like you know bid or sell or anything like that people will or facebook will automatically say oh you can't do that or, or tell you they that your post is put in a, a quarantine or some something like that uh, so I want to try to figure that out uh, you know before I do it so I don't mess it up so if you've got any experience with any of that you know leave comments for me and um, I'll tell I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about with Facebook I don't know if you guys have this issue but you get these like weird friend requests from these weird men and you go to their site and uh, all that's on their site is a couple of um, posts with their picture and it might be like a picture of them with like a cat or dog something you know that would make make it look wholesome <laughs> um, and they'll say you know they'll, a lot of them have military uniforms on or they'll, and they'll say living in Ohio but their name is uh, something that sounds like Middle Eastern or something so um, I just got one the name was so not an American or Italian or Spanish or even I don't know what it sounded really uh, Asian kind of name I guess was not uh, somebody that I knew didn't have any friends I knew um, was allegedly living in Ohio uh, but looked American looked like an American man wanted to be my friend so I reported it to Facebook because I think that's dangerous I really think there there are people out there that are not savvy that are you know looking for something and, and don't understand that there are people out there who will take advantage of them and so Facebook writes back and says, oh, well, we don't see anything wrong with his page. <laughs> well, it's like two things on his page. It's a picture of him, two pictures of him. But they don't think it's funny that, you know, there's these things. That's why I think it's not really a, a human that's actually looking at it. So anyway, you know, it could be like ISIS people or something like that. I don't know. That's what I used to say. I used to say, oh, it's like, remember when ISIS was like enticing these poor young girls and getting them to like leave their families and go to Syria or somewhere as a war bride and and then they ended up being like slaves to these people and yeah, that was going on. And so I made a comment one time that I thought that some of these men making these requests on Facebook were ISIS and I think somebody commented that that didn't make sense but it made sense to me I mean you got people that are lonely people that are looking for some connection and then somebody pops up and says hey I want to be your friend um, I don't know to me it seems fishy just doesn't seem like a legitimate friendship not to say that people can't form genuine friendships on Facebook I'm sure there are people that can but just you know look at the red flags if he only has two posts and they're both pictures of him in military uniform but his name is not an American sounding name it's just a chance just a chance there that it could be something nefarious 
know what I'm saying? And people get sucked in. You know, they believe things. You think you, you would know, but look at all the, the like, think scams that are going after the elderly. You know? I had a friend, and her, her grandmother got a, a, I don't know, if, I think it was an email, and it said, it was from her, like from the granddaughter, saying that she was in uh, some country, couldn't, couldn't get out, and needed money, and so, you know, wanted the, the uh, grandmother to send money, and she sent money, she sent a bunch of money, and it was, you know, horrifying. She lost this money without even, you know, questioning it. So, I just, I don't know, it breaks my heart that people take advantage of other people. Alright, I've got these flowers. Let's see if we can put them. So anyway, be careful. Be careful who you befriend. I know people like to be kind and if somebody says I want to be your friend, you might, you know, feel like bad saying no, but please be careful. Feel free to say no. Wow, that looks crazy. Oh, I have these pink flowers too. Oh, there's another. Some more orange flowers. So anyway, that's my rant on Facebook. You know, there's times when I'm like, I'm not going to go on Facebook. But, you know, there are things that have been good on Facebook. You know, I've been parts of groups that were good. It um, allows me to keep up with friends I wouldn't be able to keep up with otherwise. I Friends from other states, friends that I've met one time, but feel that, you know, they're good friends and family a little bit, not as much as just friends, but you know, I think there that's the way it started. It started as a way to, to keep in contact and you know, for that part of it, I think there's been a lot of good things. I've been part of a lot of good groups. And one of them is uh, the Blythe group that I was in, Blythe versus Blythe, and some of you may have been in that group. Some of my Facebook friends are there, and I met a lot of nice, wonderful people through that group. It allowed us to connect and participate in a course sort of an online way with a, a doll ac doll activities so yeah I totally feel that it's had some benefit but you know there's all the disinformation that gets put out and the people who prey on people who are susceptible. So, good and bad, I guess like most things in this world. Good and bad. don't have as many red flowers as I do orange flowers. I'm going to probably be Oh, in fact, I don't think I see even any more red. Just one more red. Crap. 
At least if I had two, I could make a symmetrical into my situation here. I had to dump all the flowers out, I noticed. I'm like a crazy person. Oh, Lord. Let me see if there's any more in this bag. it'll be orange from now on. So, for those of you who are watching, have you had any Facebook issues? I hope that nobody's been scammed. But it seems like there's always somebody out there looking to scam somebody. these little white flowers. Let's put them there. Alright, so we're coming along. Looking pretty good, don't you think? Yeah. So, next step is I want to put some green leaves because I think that will help. There's some green stuff in here. You can see where the glue gun really works so much better here because it, it's going to, you know, help to glue this down pretty quickly, which really helps when you're putting together flowers and things like that. Um, if I tried to do E6000, you know, I'd have to wait for things to dry, that sort of stuff. The thing I hate about glue guns is I don't think they hold, that glue holds as well as the E6000. You know, I think E6000, once you get it, something glued with it, it's probably going to stay. So that part is good. And it's waterproof. I like that. That part of it. Now I want to put in my sunflowers.
Okay. I think that looks pretty good. What more? What more do I need to do? stick some greenery in. For some reason I feel like it needs some greenery. Alright, so what I can do is just sort of stick these here and there. So I was thinking to put some little small flowers under here, but I honestly think it's okay. What do you think? I think it's going to be all right. I think we'll leave it like that. So uh, next step is um, I've got to put the head back on the doll and get her hair fixed, and then we'll put the the crown on her. So stay tuned. So there's the finished crown and now I just have some finishing touches for the doll. Stay safe out there. Bye.